The Ukrainian military's offensive in the Kursk region is not just a brazen attempt to stop a Russian invasion. It is the first time a nuclear power has faced an invasion and occupation by another country, the Wall Street Journal writes. For decades, nuclear escalation theory has assumed that countries with nuclear weapons have significant immunity from attack since an aggressor risks provoking Armageddon. Relatively small states such as Israel, Iran, North Korea and Libya have sought nuclear weapons in part to deter attacks from larger, better armed adversaries. The publication notes, the article emphasized that Ukraine is not a nuclear power, but it managed to seize territory in more than three weeks, which now amounts to almost 1,300 square kilometers. It's a stunning turnaround. Strategists for years often assumed that North Atlantic Treaty Organization members would seize Russian territory in battle rather than beleaguered outsiders. Now, Western leaders, military thinkers and nuclear theorists are grappling with what the current developments mean for the prospects for Russian escalation and for future war games. The publication noted, in connection with such events, the world is forced to reconsider the role that nuclear weapons can play in deterrence. The publication's analysts believe, in particular, the Russian nuclear doctrine states that the country will use nuclear weapons in the event of a threat to the sovereignty or territorial integrity of the country. Although Ukraine occupies part of Russian territory, neither side considers the Kursk region strategically important, so Ukraine's attack, however inconvenient for the Kremlin, shows no sign of crossing a Russian red line, the authors of the article believe. However, ambiguity and uncertainty are an integral part of the nuclear game. The Wall Street Journal emphasizes, Nobody really knows the Russian red line. They never named it exactly. We may find out later that we crossed the red line two months ago explained former Soviet and Russian arms control negotiator Nikolai Sokov. He draws attention in particular to the fact that the Kremlin and Russian dictator Vladimir Putin probably view threats to his regime as sovereign threats to the Russian Federation. From this perspective, significant gains by Ukraine or losses by Russia could lead to nuclear escalation. Although it would most likely begin with the broader use of non-nuclear weapons rather than a surprise attack, Sokov said, the publication emphasized that Ukraine, by invading the Kursk region, wants to show that another taboo can be broken without dire consequences. Also, part of the goal is to allow the use of more lethal and accurate American weapons on Russian territory. The playout of events triggered by Ukraine's advance into Kursk has its roots in the Cold War when escalation theory was a widely studied discipline. When the Soviet Union developed the atomic bomb in 1949, four years after the United States had created it, Western strategists tried to predict how this terrifying weapon might be used in combat. The article recalled, Russia's state polling agencies acknowledge a surge in discontent among Russians with Russian President Vladimir Putin. This was reported by the American Institute for the Study of War, ISW. The Public Opinion Foundation published a survey conducted on the 25th of this month. It showed that 28% of respondents expressed indignation or dissatisfaction with the actions of the Russian authorities. This is more than 25% and 18% in the surveys that the foundation conducted on August the 11th and 27th, respectively. The ISW noted that respondents to public opinion have not expressed such high levels of dissatisfaction since a survey conducted in November 2022 after the first month of partial mobilization in Russia. At the same time, Russia's state-run VTSIOM pollster noted that Putin's approval rating fell from 77.1% to 73.6% between August the 12th and 18th. That's a record drop even among Kremlin pollsters since the start of the full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2022. The ISW writes, The latest VTSIOM poll conducted on August the 30th showed a further decline in Putin's approval rating from 73.6% to 72.4% in the period from August the 19th to the 25th, 2024. Analysts noted that polls by Russian state agencies do not indicate any particularly pronounced discontent and are not a reliable reflection of the real mood in Russian society. 
However, these polls indicate that the Kremlin considers it necessary to acknowledge that public discontent has grown since the start of the Ukrainian Armed Forces operation in the Kursk region. The Kremlin is likely hoping that limited recognition of public discontent will protect it from accusations that it is ignoring Russian society's concerns about the situation in the Kursk region. The Kremlin appears to have mounted a sophisticated information campaign aimed at explaining to its domestic audience why Russia prioritizes continued offensive operations in eastern Ukraine over the immediate expulsion of Ukrainian forces from the Kursk region and limited acknowledgement of discontent may be part of this campaign. The report concluded. Let us recall that the Ukrainian Defense Forces have been conducting an operation in the Kursk region for almost four weeks. Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, Alexander Sirsky, reported that Ukrainian soldiers control 100 settlements in the Kursk region. In addition, 594 Russian soldiers were captured as part of the operation. In the following days, the Ukrainians' successes did not end. According to the latest information from August the 30th, the Ukrainian Armed Forces have advanced another two kilometers in the Kursk region. There is also a replenishment of the exchange fund. Sirsky reported this during a meeting of the Supreme Commander-in-Chief's headquarters.